Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's The Just Bernard Show here on, well, all my social media channels. Um, anyway, so this week I had written some notes to put a show together for you all, and actually I already forgot what the topic was. It was one of those things where I think it was like 11.30 last night, and I started scribbling down all these notes, and I completely... I don't know where I put them. I don't know where the notepad went. <laughs> and so I, I'm not going to have that show for you. I'm hoping I'll find that one um, uh, during this week. But uh, anyway, so those of you who tune in regularly, as you know, last week uh, we were having some construction done upstairs and I wasn't able uh, to do a live show as quote unquote. So we did do a repeat. We did a live repeat uh, with some commentary from myself before and after. But uh, this week, I had this on my calendar for uh, next Saturday, what I'm going to be doing today, because I do have an alternative. Uh, I had it on my calendar uh, to do a reshoot. Uh, as many of you know, about, geez, uh, I guess it's been about a week and a half, two weeks now. Well, a week and a half. Uh, that we did the live version of the Tarot, Knowing the Tarot Masterclass. And uh, I've been reviewing, you know, I'm getting it ready to, I'm going to be presenting it publicly as a master course, uh, as you've heard me talk about before. And yes, of course, we recorded it. It's about three and a half, four hours long uh, of video. And, and I've been reviewing it. And there were some parts of it that I wanted to reshoot, and I was going to do all the reshoots uh, this weekend. But I figured since uh, I didn't have, uh, I couldn't find my notes, everything happens for a reason. You know that? Everything happens for a reason. Uh, I figured that I would just go ahead and uh, do the reshoot with all of you live for this one particular uh, segment. Uh, I'll probably have a couple more reshoots. Maybe I'll just keep doing the reshoots with all of you. But um, anyway, so I, I wanted to touch base with you, though, before we get into the, the meat uh, of the story and of today's show, and uh, just ask you all how you're doing. Uh, I know for me, I, uh, it's weird. I, I work from home. And while, yes, I, uh, one of the projects and one of the things that I do is I'm the uh, one of the facilities managers, the facilities manager for uh, the local diversity center, and we've been closed. And so I, I'm only there maybe eight hours a week or, well, sometimes more. Yeah, mostly more. But uh, <laughs> I um, just even those, you know, eight hours out of the house has made a big difference. Not being able to go to the gym has made a big difference. Uh, well, it, and it just really... It, it didn't dawn on me how much of a difference it made. I was like, eh, I work from home. It's not going to affect me. But I've had cabin fever. I don't know about you all, but I am starting to have cabin fever. And uh, yes, uh, I do have a friend of mine, my gym buddy, who we do take a walk in the park once a week during our, our gym time. Uh, but it's not the same as being at the gym and working out. You know, yes, it's nice to chat and walk up and down the hills and the trails and whatnot. But anyway... I think I'm ready for life to, I don't want to say get back to normal. Uh, I would like to say I'm ready for us to get out of the house and make a better life for everybody. Uh, I hope it doesn't go back too much to normal. I'm liking the fact that everyone's being so kind and so compassionate and you know, so generous. Uh, I'm liking the good parts of it. Uh, that's not to say there's not some negative stuff going on, but, you know, humanity has been showing, at least within my experience, uh, humanity has been showing some of its better parts. And, uh, geez, if I would have thought of it, I do, I would have done a reading for all of this, but I, that's a little too, that's neither here nor there. It's not good to do a whole reading for the whole world, but um, at least not in my experience. Anyway, so I hope everyone's doing well, and I'm really glad that you're joining me here today. And uh, let's see if uh, I see anybody on the chat. If anybody wants to say hello, I would love to say hello to you. And I don't see anything yet. Okay. Unless I'm on the wrong page. We have about five different streams happening right now. <laughs> 
I am considering getting one of those, um, well, subscribing to one of those services that uh, give me one central chat for all of them. But at, like everything, it costs money. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. So why don't we go ahead and get started with today's topic. Live from the heart of the Blue Ridge, Roanoke, Virginia. It's the Just Bernard Show with host Bernard Alvarez. Join Bernard as he shares topics that reveal the real matrix and empower your human experience, including world liberty, the esoteric, suppressed technologies, spiritual ascension, and human consciousness. Humanity has awakened, and our time has come to realize our full potential. And now, live from the Star City, your host, Bernard Alvarez. Uh, this segment is called the metaphysical philosophy of a tarot reading. And what I'd like to do is share with you how I personally approach uh, doing a tarot reading. Now, I have, uh, I have, I have uh, experimented with many different uh, layouts and spreads and whatnot, and I, I've, I've become very comfortable uh, with the Celtic spread, even though I may have my own little variation of it. Uh, but there's a reason for that, and uh, I talk about that more uh, uh, in the next couple segments of the course. But let me share with you how I how I approach it. And and I tell this to every person that I'm doing a reading for. And I make sure it's kind of like my disclaimer, but I'm always happy to answer questions uh, when I'm beginning to do a reading because it, it, I might have a little bit of a different take than some people do when it comes to a reading. And the first thing that I say to somebody is I do not consider myself a fortune teller. And I do not consider a tarot reading as a fortune telling type thing. I, as many of you know, I see the tarot or as I see life in general as energy. I see it as cause and effect. And I see it as a stream of consciousness that is, com you know, constantly unfolding uh, one action after another, you know, whether it be a reaction uh, to a cause or a proaction by us deciding to take a, a different path or making a different decision. So I explain that for me, I see the cards as tapping into our collective unconsciousness, our collective unconscious. And that all of these symbols, and there are a lot of symbols, especially depending on what type of deck you use, some have more symbolism than others, but all of these symbols speak to our, sub, our subconscious mind and also tap into our collective unconscious. Uh, I see them as, I see the, the, the reading or the tarot spread as uh, bringing to the surface that which is buried underneath. Uh, and as I was saying earlier, I, I choose the Celtic cross spread because I see it as a, and the way that I do it, you know, there's a, there's a beginning, well, there's actually a past as well, but there's a beginning, a middle and an end, and it kind of flows in a pattern of, well, this is where the energy was, this is where we are, and this is where we're headed if things keep going in that particular, uh, if the energy and the attention and the focus and everything surrounding that continues in this fashion, this is where we're going to, where we're going to end up. The, I also see this as, you know, we call, we call it the fool's journey, but it's also the hero's journey. It tells the story of, of our life. 
Uh, the tarot spread is an interpretation of your individual story, uh, where you've been on that story, where you are, and where you're headed in that story. And that goes back into, yes, you can change it. I would say that the outcome card is not written in stone, that we have the ability to change the course and the direction of what the spread is telling you, you know, what's coming, you know, because it will, it will share with you uh, what's coming. And I always precurse that with if things keep going the way that they're going. So with that being said, um, let's talk about what the collective unconscious is. Uh, I'm sure you might have heard the term, uh, especially you, especially those of you who have studied Carl Jung. Carl Jung is uh, the gentleman, the psychoanalyst, psychologist, uh, contemporary of Sigmund Freud, who actually coined the term. And I, when I was studying psychology in school, I considered myself more of a Jungian than a Freudian because Jung was open to the metaphysical aspects of humanity and especially with this concept of the collective unconscious. And he believes, believed, and so do I, that the collective unconscious is this the sea of, of, of thought that we all share. Um, it's it's the collective unconscious of humanity. Not it's not your subconscious. We have our we have our conscious mind, which we are aware of when we're present and we're paying attention and being mindful. That's our our conscious, our our awakened conscious. Then we have the subconscious, which a lot of us actually work off of when we're not paying attention. You're usually reacting to something from your subconscious mind, or you know, some memory or or uh, some trauma or some happiness or whatever. Uh, human beings have the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, and everyone has the collective unconscious, which is the universal conscious uh, that, we all, that we all share. And within that, we have the archetypes, and that's what these symbols uh, tap into. And for those of you that may not know what an archetype is, uh, I, probably one of the reasons why I love uh, magic, paganism, the occult and all that, because it deals with so many archetypes, but archetypes are basically simple representations of universal energies, universal figures and universal relationships. For example, um, we have the mother-child relationship, and we see that archetype in the Isis Horus uh, statues or the Mary Jesus statues. That is a, a universal archetype for that quote-unquote energy relationship. Uh, we also, you know, the father-child, uh, and as well, uh, I like to um, tap into and take this moment to share the idea of, uh, you know, how in magic and in all of these occult type things uh, I, that I align with uh, the the comedic idea of what you know gods and goddesses are. They are archetypes of universal energies. Whether it is the love relationship, whether it is uh, uh, the earth itself, whether it's a rainstorm. Uh, these are all representative symbols of these universal archetypes. And it all goes, again, the tarot goes all back to all of this. Uh, they can represent an action. They can represent a situation. And, and most of all, and this is what I look for when I do a reading, is they represent a universal pattern of your human nature, of all of our human nature. So archetypes can represent any of these, love, money, nature, rain, anger, you know, compassion, all of these natural forces that are part of all our lives. So with that, let's dive into what I had mentioned earlier, how each spread for me is a, well, a chapter of your hero's journey. Now, I love the term, the hero's journey, and, and I use that, um, it, to me, that equates to the fool's journey, which is basically the same thing. 
Um, we talk about how the tarot is a full journey, and I'll get into that in just a second. But you may remember, especially if you are someone who's been uh, watching me or has studied any type of mythology or esoteric or, or, or well, Joseph Campbell. Uh, it was Joseph Campbell who uh, coined the term the hero's journey. And it, ref it refers to, uh, now this is just the, you know, the standard definition, but I'll expand on it in a second. It refers to a wide ranging category of tales in which a character ventures out to get what they need, faces conflict, and ultimately triumphs over adversity. Now, anyone who has uh, watched um, the uh, PBS special with Bill Moyers and Joseph Campbell, uh, they talk very much around how the hero's journey is represented, you know, so beautifully in the story of Luke Skywalker and Star Wars. You know, he's, here's this guy, he doesn't really know what's going on. He gets thrust into the situation. Uh, he faces conflict and overcomes all those obstacles and becomes the hero and returns uh, to his, you know, his tribe, his family, whatever, as the hero. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, the general, what's his name? Uh, I'm going to be embarrassed for not remembering. <laughs> George Lucas uh, admitted that uh, Campbell's uh, interpretation of the hero's journey was very much what... Um, drove him or, or inspired him with the story of Star Wars, or, or at least it was an influence. It was an influence and in all of that. But the hero's journey can apply to any of us. Uh, it can apply to us as, you know, leaving home for the first time, uh, trying to find a job, getting fired from a job, getting married, getting divorced, and then, you know, overcoming that particular obstacle and, uh, and blossoming into something. I personally can relate to uh, hero's journey chapters within my own life several times, uh, having, you know, moved into uh, a space or moved into a place like I did when I moved up here, not knowing anything, not knowing anyone, and then just blossoming uh, into um, a, a more authentic uh, person and a, a hero to myself, at least. But um, we're all heroes and we all do go through that particular archetype of the hero's journey. So what does this have to do with the Toro? Again, returning back to what I was talking about within the tarot spread, especially the Celtic cross spread, which is the one that I, I like because of its uh, symbolism of the hero's journey with a past, present, future, and a particular outcome that shows perhaps may show obstacles, strengths, and weaknesses. Um, but all in all, the tarot is known as the fool's journey. Uh, it's represented by the number zero. Now, the number zero is the fool card. In the story of the tarot, the fool is all of us. Uh, they are, the fool is excited to go on a journey. Uh, the Fool is sometimes so excited, and if you look at the particular card itself, especially on the Rider weight deck, uh, he's got his little stick with his little bag, and he's got the little dog nipping at his ankle, and he's about to step off of a cliff. But he doesn't notice it because he's so excited to venture out, you know, that he doesn't watch a step, and, you know, he falls into the abyss, and then the adventure begins. And that's very symbolic of what many of us go through uh, at any particular time in our life. Um, now, the major arcana uh, is the fool's divine journey. So as opposed to the day-to-day -day stuff that goes on, which is what the minor arcana represents. Uh, the major arcana, again, to remind you, major arcana represents uh, uh, the divine aspects of our, of our spiritual selves, but also the divine influences, uh, either that we're being inspired or being called to be aware of, or, or sometimes it's just the universe 
grabbing us by the shoulders and shaking us and saying, look at this, you know, <laughs> you've got to take an eye, keep an eye on this, you know, focus on this. We need you to look at this for you to blossom and to grow. But um, so the fool's journey and, and I talk about this in the next segment uh, of the course, and I actually share with you the entire fool's journey. And, and it's a beautiful story and it, rep and it goes through all of the major arcana cards and explains all the different archetypes and situations uh, that the fool uh, must, well, experience and overcome and gain strength from. So with that, I will leave you to uh, watch The Fool's Journey during the next segment, and I hope you enjoy it. And cut. Okay. <laughs> there. So that is uh, the segment I needed to reshoot. I hope you enjoyed listening to it. Uh, as you know, I, um, I am going to be editing this course uh, like I said, there's about four hours of video that I'm probably going to break up into about, geez, I don't know, 12, 15 lessons. But um, I'm looking forward to it. I really enjoyed spending all the time with everybody that was there. But while we're here, I just wanted to know how... Um, I, I'll take a question or two if you're here, actually. <laughs> I'm actually on... I'm looking at the chat on the Bernard Alvarez fan page. So if you do have a question, I'm more than happy to take a question right now. But, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I will say that um, this is, uh, I'll, I'll share some highlights of the course and actually some pointers because I will say that uh, one of the questions that I do get a lot is, do I read for myself? And I, I don't. I do not like reading for myself. I think it's, uh, I feel for me, uh, when I'm doing a reading, it's, um, I do a whole little ritual of getting prepared, altering my state of consciousness. I, I do a little affirmation, you know, spell, whatever, ritual, whatever you want to call it. And when I'm in that altered state of consciousness, I feel like I'm really connected, you know, through my higher self and I, I and I'm working I'm not working from a place of ego. I, I'm just letting the the words kind of just flow through. I, I'm not going to go as far as say I'm channeling source or my guides at that point, but it is not coming from ego. Every time I read for myself, uh, the ego always creeps in. It always creeps in. I might see a card I don't like or, you know, well, I'll give you an example of, uh, uh, going through a breakup, well, the last breakup, I, major breakup I had was probably 10 years ago when I split from my husband, but, and I kept doing the readings of, I don't even remember what the question was, but let's just say I kept reading and reading and reading. I'm like, I don't like the answer. Let me do it again. No, I don't like the answer. Let me do it again. And that's, that's no way to read. So if you have the ability to read for yourself when you're not angry, sad, um, you know, in crisis or going through a major upheaval, then yeah, I mean, I do an advice card, uh, you know, should I, should I work with this uh, person? Should I do a project with this um, nonprofit? Should I, you know, is it a good idea to, for me to affiliate myself with this brand or these people? I'll do advice cards, but for me, that's uh, usually like a three card, yes or no spread, or it'll just be like uh, my one, I do one card readings for myself. And and I do do that. I, I'll do it once a day, usually uh, just pull, you know, an inspiration card. What, what should I be focusing on today? Just to kind of wake me up and get me into a, a headspace of what's going on. Uh, I used to keep my, I used to keep my, um, my cards under my pillow, but um, I I feel like they've gotten a life of their own. So now I keep them uh, on my bookcase, and uh, I do uh, usually it's usually actually at the end of my day. So that'll be my energy for the next uh, the next day or so. But uh, yeah, I, I don't like the idea of of reading for myself. And you know, hey, if you have that ability to shut out your ego. 
and read for yourself. Good for you. I think it's great. Oh, uh, another thing, uh, speaking of advice, uh, when, when I was trained, and this is not, this is probably not even going to be in the uh, tarot course. I don't even think I talked about it. But when I was trained magically, uh, I was always told you never do a spell or, you know, a ceremonial ritual for a particular outcome without doing a reading first. And I did that for years. And again, that didn't work for me because of my ego. If I wanted to do the spell, I wanted that, you know, that tarot reading to read the way I wanted it to. <laughs> and it just, I just got frustrated. And, uh, you know, I now I just make sure that any magic I do is uh, either for the greater good of myself or the greater good of everyone involved. Uh, very, very rarely uh, will I ask for something in a greedy way. I'm usually it's I'm usually asking for I need a new camera for my work. I need a new uh, I don't know a new computer for my work. It's usually having to do with the work that I do, uh, you know, with and for humanity and through social media and whatnot. So I, I don't think that that's too greedy, but um, I, I will say that. Uh, I, I, tr I just I just do it now and but I just make sure that it's not too gray. I used to do a lot of gray magic, but I won't do gray magic anymore. Um, except for maybe like that, you know, you know, please, I need a new or I have a new computer. but and yes, I do have a new computer, thank goodness. <laughs> that, that spell happened really quickly. But, um, you know, what else can we do for for the tarot? What else can we do with the tarot? You, you'd be surprised. I mean, I, I don't know how many of you have worked with tarot and how interested you are in it. But even from a, a psychological perspective or an intuitive perspective or meditative perspective, uh, perspective, <laughs> inspective, uh, it's a wonderful tool to use for these types of things. And you can do a lot of things. And... I will say that, uh, you know, in, in most uh, occult and esoteric uh, pract practices, um, disciplines is probably a better term, uh, whether you're looking at ancient, ancient Egyptian magic or you're looking at Golden Dawn or even modern paganism, uh, all that symbolism is in the tarot. And it kind of helps you to learn all of that and connect with the feeling of those archetypes and those symbols and, and what they mean and what they mean to you. And I feel that's the most important thing I can say about uh, utilizing the Tarot is being honest with how each card, uh, what it means to you. But I digress, we're out of time. And I wanna thank you for joining me today for my reshoot of the metaphysical what did i even call this the metaphysical philosophy of a tarot reading and yes i will find those notes uh, and uh, we will be having uh, another new show for you next week oh actually what day is oh we are doing something new next week we will be celebrating beltane next week so I will put up all the information. We will be doing a, a live interactive Beltane Sabbath together during my show next week. That'll be on April 28th. So uh, please join in. Uh, join me for Beltane. And let's get this spring blossoming and blossom out of our house. And everybody be safe and be healed uh, with that energy. So yes, we are doing belt in. I'm actually gonna post that ASAP. So thank you all for watching. I love you so very much. And thank you for being a part of my journey, my hero's journey and my fool's journey. <laughs> I thank you for being here. I love you. Have a wonderful week. Be safe and stay inside. Or at least stay far away from each other. <laughs> you Zoom. I love you. Bye-bye. Oh.